Hi guys, Roxanne here from Tiny Home Living. Well, some good news today. It's another beautiful day. Feels like summer, but it's sort of close to fall, unfortunately. Anyhow, just want to take you outside and show you what Chris is up to. Um, we got lucky. Good timing. I left three of the little eggs in here to try and encourage the girls to use this nesting box, but they have put it. Wilma hasn't given me a chocolate egg for a couple of days. Look at this baby. We're gonna have to, we must not have gotten all the stuff out of her foot. And another little baby one in here. I don't know how many little ones that is today. Ruby was causing such a ruckus today. I don't know why. The babies were inside the hutch and she was standing on top of it just, well, she was making the noises that they make when they're going to lay an egg. So I can't remember. I think the babies are like a month old, so maybe it's getting to that time. I'm not sure. Look at the size of that. A month old chick. Still hoping this one's a hen. Second one. But I also found one of the little tiny eggs in here yesterday, and of course there's so much turkey poop I hardly saw it. Um, but anyway, I thought maybe she was going to lay an egg. There was so much noise going on. I think that might be seven. Look at this guy. Seven of the little eggs today. That's the highest number. I've had <laughs> That's Chris starting the truck and these guys, every time he makes a noise, they start gobbling. Oh, and that's the white rooster, Mr. Freezer Camp. There you go. Put your feathers back down. My goodness, you are so ugly. <gasps> He's just driving out the driveway in there, making a ruckus. Ya. Crazy turkeys. Look at Desi's fluffy mom. Isn't it pretty? You are such a pretty boy, except for your comb. It's kind of goofy. <coughs> is leaving to get another load of free fill. We were, that was one of the unsolved dilemmas for us, was he, he put a lot of this here is built up, it was much lower, from where he dug out the side of the hill for the um, root cellar. But that was before we intended to put the greenhouse in. So this was basically just so he could drive through here easily. Now that we changed our minds and we're putting the greenhouse in, so the solar array has to move, but this is quite high compared to that. So we needed quite a bit of fill um, to bring this level to put the greenhouse in because I think the wall is going to be out there, you know, three or four feet, something like that. We're going to reuse these uh, pot screw piles to build sort of a beam to uh, support the weight of this side of the greenhouse. So anyway, you know, 48 feet long, it's not as bad down there, but this is quite a bit of fill needed here. So, we were um, driving to town, and they're working on a bridge, and it said free fill. Now, this would not be considered clean fill, because it's got these hunks of concrete, where they've been mixing concrete, and um, they've torn concrete out. They're uh, doing repairs on the bridge or upkeep or whatever. So this would not be considered clean fill, but what Chris is going to do is take the chunks of concrete, put them in where the most fill is needed, and this will compact down really, really well. This was all the clay from the hill that he took out here. There's a little bit of sand on top, but it's, it was all clay that he deposited here. So it, it gets really solid really quickly. So this is just awesome news because I don't know if you guys have tried to buy fill recently, but just the trucking costs alone is what makes it uh, so expensive. So we've, he's just gone, this is only one load in uh, our friend's trailer. So, you know, he might get, to, he's getting a second load now and they're even there with the Bobcat to put it in for him.
So that's just awesome news. You know, again, you know I love free, but um, this was going to, not only where do you get it, but how much is it going to cost? That's the big problem. So we will be able to um, get this all filled in and, and once the rack is out of the way, uh, get this all leveled out and tamped down and um, it'll look great and it'll be absolutely perfect and in perfect timing too. And just down the road, like hardly even have to go very far to get it. So, and they're there with the bobcat to load it for you. Just doesn't get any better than that. I just trimmed these tomatoes a few days ago and they need to be done again. I'm going to have to cut the grass out of my greenhouse again. Um, I thought it would sort of die off better, but look at the blossoms on the jalapeno plant. There's already some in here. There's a nice sized one right here. And then there's some little red ones. Don't ask me why there's red ones. There's that little one growing um, another couple inches and I'll be able to pinch the top off and that'll make it go crazy. Um, if you watch past videos, uh, I pinch the tops off of the pepper plants and they go bonkers. And I've got absolutely tons of these um, sweet peppers on these plants. So now I finally know that these are the sweet peppers. I'm hoping they're going to change color because um, I love the colored ones. And then uh, these ones, look at the little baby bell pepper. Isn't that cute? So pretty soon I'm going to have absolutely tons of bell peppers. Might make some pickled eggs. There's some in there. I don't know if you can see them. Um, this one here, that's the nicest size one right there. It's hard to see because the everything's green, but um, and still tons more blossoms coming on top. My little lime tree that uh, has the most limes on it. This one was the very first lime. I should probably pick it, put it in a drink or something. But um, the trees have done really well. You can see all the new leaves on my little stick tree here. This one's key lime as well, and that one's the Meyer lemon. Now the lemon hasn't gotten any bigger, and this one don't see new leaves yet, but I have faith after seeing this one come back. Uh, my two little cherry tomato plants that I thought were beefsteak tomatoes are doing well. You know, if I can just keep a couple of these going and just have enough tomatoes to put in a salad, that's really the goal, is to just not have to buy that stuff. My basil's not doing too bad. I think that's supposed to be celery. <laughs> It's a bigger pot. And this lime tree here not only has new leaves, but it is absolutely covered in blossoms. I'm always astonished because, you know, for it to have so many blossoms, this one's the uh, Meyer lemon as well, for it to have so many blossoms without that many leaves, I find really. And then this one, of course, has the most blossoms too. So, there's a couple of little tomatoes. Um, so I'm glad I brought all these tomato plants in. Once we can move them into the greenhouse, it'll be just fantastic and not so crowded. I'm trying to get as much in here as I can to keep it from being eaten by the turkeys. And this also, like a, a pot or two of these, this is the peas. And, um, you know, this is basically eight peas I planted in here. So once they get to be really high, I might even have to put a, a tall tomato cage in for them. I only put this on to keep the silly turkeys from eating them. But um, also, this was barely visible. I put this tomato cage here to remind me not to mow over it. But the raspberries are kind of going crazy now. And this is the first year they've looked this healthy, so you never know. I might actually get some berries next year. This pot, there were only two little white onions in it, so I pulled it, and I'm going to try and get the last tomato plant out of the garden and into it. And again, more peppers. Peppers, peppers, peppers. My goodness. Now I can see that one there is a sweet pepper. So these ones might be sweet peppers. I should have marked them better, obviously. Now, especially this bush here, this one's really big. So that's exciting. There still should be... I mean, these were planted in a row, so obviously... Some of them didn't make it, 
And then I planted those two from the pail here somewhere too. So they might show up next year. It's hard to say. The half scaps, you can hardly even tell I put manure here. So I've been raking up the last of the manure back there to try and put some more on here. Um, the gooseberries look absolutely fantastic. So this was the little mangy one I just bought for seven bucks when they were getting rid of everything in town. So it'll look better next year. And again, the rhubarb, you can't even tell I put manure on here. This is one of the apple trees, and I believe this one's a honey crisp too. That was dead, so I'm just going to let the shoots. There's more than one, but, you know, we see this a lot, or we saw it a lot in Ontario. Um, the trees just had, like, you know, a whole bunch, of, instead of, like, a stick, like they groom them from the nursery, it was just, you know, all kinds of branches coming up from the ground and going everywhere. So, but before my battery died, um, I was saying I, I want to add the last of the manure from the by the barn to this rhubarb, and I'm really hoping for, you know, some a decent amount of rhubarb next year. I think this is like the third or fourth year. The other thing we got done yesterday was had got these pipes laid out with the wire running through it um, up to where it's got to hook up to the new tiny house, and then we've got to dig a little trench to put this through, which. I'm not looking forward to, of course. <laughs> and another thing we are going to do. We didn't end up picking the garlic because the bulbs were just so small. We're not impressed at all. And we went to a place and bought very expensive seed garlic. Um, so it's not easy. It's not hard to find the garlic in here, obviously. Um, but it's nothing but thistles and grass and uh, saplings, tree saplings. So I believe we are going to till this under and put garden fabric down uh, this year and plant the garlic in garlic, or garden fabric. This is, this is just crazy. And you can't weed this. This is nuts. So uh, hopefully we'll have time to get more garlic planted this year. Um, but we're definitely going to use uh, garden fabric for that too, because that mess is just nuts. <sighs> and of course, you know, to just till that under, you're just replanting all that grass and thistles and everything. So we're going to have to at least um, pull those massive thistles and burn them or take them to the dump. And, uh, you know, I don't want that in the soil. And we haven't been adding compost to that either, um, just because, of, you know, you're planting garlic in the fall and the compost isn't ready till the spring. So the other thing I did was I pulled all the apples off this tree and made apple pies for the freezer. I just don't have time to do any canning right now. This one ended up with just a couple apples. There's one there and one there. Um, but a beautiful tree. I think it'll do really well next year if it doesn't die. <laughs> and then I pulled most of the apples from this Honeycrisp uh, tree and used them to make apples too. And what I'm going to do is I'm making um, pie with just the apples from the back tree. Someday maybe I'll find the, uh, the map of the garden the orchard that I made, and I marked on each tree and what kind it was. Um, but what I did with the apples, I made one pie with the honey crisp, two apple, two pies with the apples from the back, and I'm going to do one with mixed. So we can kind of decide what we like best for making apple pie. So some serious apple pie testing coming up. We'll see how that works out. But. Uh, the ones at the back are very, very tart compared to these. And the other day we were in the grocery store checking on prices. Six dollars for a little cantaloupe grown in Alberta. And the Honeycrisp apples were three ninety nine. I never in my life thought I would see two dollar a pound apples. Um, especially back in Ontario where we, you know, everybody was growing apples. But four dollars a pound for Honeycrisp apples like you can't afford to make an apple pie now. It's crazy. So um, anyway, I mean, 
That's one of the things I recommend to everybody if they're setting up a homestead or they want to go off grid or whatever. Get your fruit trees planted year one. And then, I mean, we're in like year three or something for these. Um, and we're just starting to get a nice little bit of apples, not huge. So, um, I mean, you can look online. A lot of people in the city have older apple trees and they're absolutely loaded with apples and a lot of them are giving them away for free so that's always a, an option to watch for ads like that. Now the really bad news about Chris doing the fill is I get stuck stuck shelling peas. A lot of peas. Chris is back with the second load of fill and boy is it heavy. That's a three-quarter ton heavy duty and it's squatting the box down pretty low. Finally done shelling the peas. I think this is about five pounds. I just weighed them. I know about what the bowl weighs. So find another five pounds of peas to go into the freezer. And I'm going to do them in serving sizes again. We'll do that tonight. It's crazy turkeys. <laughs> Chris put the third load of fill over there. He's been wanting to do that for ages. And uh, of course getting the fill or finding fill was the issue. Um, so he dumped the second load of fill here, and this isn't where it's going to go, of course, but um, we need to get the solar array out. He's going to take the, the chunks of concrete and put them down first, um, and then pack the clay on top of it. But yeah, quite a bit of fill. Oh, it is so hot out. Just as well inside shelling peas, I guess. Look at those crazy turkeys. My goodness. Look at that crazy potato patch. Five foot high weeds. Whatever they are. <sighs> I should go in and try to pull at least the thistles and whatever this other crap is. It's probably something in the straw. Not a whiff of a wind. Or breeze. Look at these crazy birds. This one's just gonna sit and watch. <laughs> They've gotta be right wherever he's working. I guess they're not gonna like him so much when it's time for freezer camp. It was very narrow there and the water from the county road was uh, running through here. So he's added quite a fill, quite a bit of fill over a couple of years up there to try and keep the water from the road coming onto the property. It's not supposed to happen, but it was. What do you think? It's too hot out here. Why don't you go sit in the shade, silly? Look at this little stumpy Christmas tree. Look at these hens are into the baby's food again, for Pete's sake. Listen to the noise Barney's making. I better go check on him. Ruby's over here with her babies. The older hens don't fly over the fence, but... Hmm, yeah, that's weird. Never heard that before. What's up, Barney? Oh, he's not injured. Thought something was wrong with him. Do you guys have to eat the baby's food? Seriously? It's chick starter, you goofballs. What's the matter, Barney? Hmm? What's the funny noise all about? It's kind of like a purring. A big... I cannot believe the size of that chick. I've never heard that noise before. See, the older hens don't fly over the gate. All these younger ones do. Chrissy, what are you doing in there? Are they invading your space, Ruby? Yeah, that 
little one with the dark wings, I'm hoping is a hen. The other two are roosters, I think, for sure. Hopefully not the third one. I know. Oh my goodness, seriously? Now oh, these guys are all starting. Even the turkey. Ruby and Barney are both going. I don't know. Silly chickens.